Hi everyone, it's Jeanette here from The Sewing Studio with another fun little project. You're going to get fed up in me saying that, aren't you? But I've had so much fun doing this one. Uh, this is a lovely little cushion. Uh, it's a free pattern that's on the Moda website. And actually somebody here spotted it and said, Jeanette, will you make this cushion for us? And I was like, absolutely, yes. Can't wait to get started. So it's um, Hello Summer is the name of the pattern. And it's My Summer House. Uh, it's a, a, made from a little mini charm. Let me just bring that one in under the close up so you can see it. It's a Bunny Hill design. It's a, it's a PDF download on the Moda website, as I said. We'll put a link um, for you to that and to the fabrics and it just uses one little mini charm and that includes the little applique there in the center uh, I think she said 24 uh, two and a half inch squares but I actually got both of the leaves out of one two and a half inch square so I only needed 23 so it was 20 for the actual patchwork and then three for uh, the flower so I'm going to show you how I made this. As I said, it came together really well, really lovely little pattern. And it's, it's got the, um, the little uh, diagram in the back for the, the flower. Let me just put that one to one side. Now she does just say in the instructions, just applique using your favorite method. As I said, this is Bunny Hill Designs. And I know on her website, she's done quite a lot of applique patterns in the past. I know she's done blocks of months. I, I took part in one where we did lovely little applique snowmen and things. Um, so she's, she's uh, very lovely for sort of sharing all her, her designs and stuff with us um, and getting us encouraging to, to use her patterns and to use her fabrics, which are beautiful. Now, I'm just going to shimmy this one up a little bit because my summer house, as you can probably see it on the cushion, let me bring that one in. It's got all these lovely little little houses in there and I try to wherever I could get a nice little feature in there I've, I've sort of chosen that one so I get a little bit of um, the tree in there and also I fussy cut the center of that one so there was a nice little flower in the center of the flower so I was sort of quite specific with what I wanted to use and where um, for this but it, they're just beautiful beautiful uh, little fabrics and so I've got a few left that I'm going to mix up with some other fabrics and, and perhaps come up with another little project at some point in the future. So this was um, the one that I've used and you can see and you can see on the cushion there is just these lovely sort of pale aquas and reds and creams. Uh, and I think in there she gives you um, the fabric to use. There is a porcelain, which is the one I use because actually I had some off cuts from the quilt we did a while back. Uh, so I don't think for that one I needed to, to have any additional fabric. I'm just looking for where she says here, might be on the front. Yes, yeah, so she uses a Bella porcelain or a dotty, dotty dot cream is the other one she says for um, the uh, surrounding for the border. And on the back, backing, she uses uh, a meadow sweet cream. Uh, I've just used some more of that porcelain because, as I said, I had some of that left. But all the fabric quantities are there on the back of the pattern. So let's have a little look at some of the other fabrics we can use. And I'm going to bring in my second version. I'll keep that close at hand actually because I might need to refer back to that. And we went completely different. So we went from summer straight into Halloween. <laughs> so straight into autumn or fall, as uh, you in the US would call it. We went straight to fall from summer. I'll come back to my summer house in a moment. So for the uh, squares, you just need 20 for the patchwork, as I said. And we used Noir, this one is called, uh, Mini Charm. And it's by Ali K Design. So that's the uh, little mini charm. Let me put that in under the close up so you can see that one there. And it's all these fun Halloween prints in oranges and blacks and whites. So we thought we would go very different on this one. So that's the patchwork. You just need a, a row of six, sort of basically two four patches, a four and a half inch square. But you can see on this one, I actually just took some of my leftover um, pale or light fabrics to make uh, the background on that. So that was four two and a half inch squares rather than a four and a half inch square and then six more two and a half inch squares for the bottom. Now I've pre-sewn those so that we can focus on the applique elements of this and then we'll put this together and put the border on right at the end. So that's just a little sneak peek of one of the other fabric ranges. Now let me just move that one up there because we've also thought well, we could do Christmas. So we've been having a look and we've picked out this little um, mini charm Kitty Christmas by Urban chicks which are some really nice fun so you could definitely do a christmas version so we didn't just stick with her flower we're like you could change up that applique shape in the center 
and make it for any season or you could put a stitchery in the center there or you could just do some nice quilting so you don't always have to stick exactly to, to how the pattern has finished things so if i just hold that under the camera and just do a little flick through those lovely christmasy greens uh, and then that sort of tealy and the aquas um, going into the red so a really nice a uh, little bit of pink in there as well which is always nice makes it a little bit more of a modern uh, take but still with those traditional reds and greens for Christmas so noir we've done there's also this one back to school so if you wanted to do it uh, for well I say not just a, a child's children's more of a children's style and like I say you could change up what you put in the center there make it more sort of school theme themed but definitely here we've got some of those nice sort of bright colors the blues and the reds so that would be a nice fun one as well and then the other one we thought was uh, a little bit um, sort of more sort of summery again, but sort of brighter colours is Land of Enchantment uh, by Sarah Thomas of Seridity. And that's got some really nice um, sort of blues and greens. So that we thought those would all work really well. So grab yourself a nice little mini charm, anyone that takes your fancy and um, you can sort of do this little cushion. So enough jibber jabber, Jeanette. Let's get on with the applique so for this one we decided instead of doing the flower and you could of course do the flower in the halloween fabrics but we decided we were going to put a little pumpkin on so i thought mm, i don't think i had a look through all my applique shapes i didn't have anything that was the right size for a pumpkin so i drew one <laughs> i'm going to make a disclaimer here i'm not an artist <laughs> but i thought surely i could draw a pumpkin so my, the method to my madness was I cut a four inch square of paper because that's the finished size that this needed to fit into. So I thought, actually, if I drew something that looked like it fitted it onto that four inch piece of paper, then that should be the right size for the center of the cushion. So you can see my little spider there, which is quite good for me because I have a real spider phobia, but we're OK with that because I think I'm going to do a little stitching once this is on the cushion. I think I'm going to do a little stitching and do a little spider's web with a little spider coming down from the corner. So there's some more embellishing to do yet. But on this one, I decided to do raw edge applique. And I just got some uh, bond web, heat and bond, it, um, steamer seam is another one. It's just a double-sided fusible. Um, now, the thing just to bear in mind with this method is whatever you're doing will come out in reverse. So if you wanted that in reverse, you'd have to reverse the image first before you trace it, because we're actually going to trace on the paper side. So for those that haven't seen it, I'll just put it under the close up. There's sort of like a gluey, bumpy side, and then there's a papery side. Now on both of those, um, it's glue. It's a, it's a double-sided glue, but it's got the paper. So all I did on this was I put my little piece of uh, fusible, double-sided fusible on there, and I just drew around Oh, have I picked a pen that doesn't work? Don't do this in friction pen. <laughs> because we've all done that mistake, haven't we? We've sort of marked something out, taken it to the iron. It's where, ah, oh, yeah, that's all gone. So literally, I just drew around the shape. I didn't need a light box or anything. I can see through. So I did that. That's my sort of main pumpkin. I'm going to move that along. That's my centerpiece for the pumpkin. Now, if anybody wants my little bit of artistry as a free download, do let me know because we can scan it in. Um, you may go, no, Jeanette, we, there's no way we want that. Or you may go, oh, yes, that would be really helpful. But um, so let me know. I've dra drawn it so I can do what I like with it. So that's the centre bit. And then we just need another little bit. And I'm not going to waste fusible. I'm going to put it there for the stalk. Now, the thing just to remember with the stalk is it needs to come down into the pumpkin. So I'm actually going to sort of just bring it down beyond the edge and just do a little sort of mark like that. So you can see, actually, if I put that, there are my three shapes for the pumpkins. That's all you need for this pumpkin. And then we're just going to get some scissors and rough cut that out. Now for the center one, I actually chose a piece of fabric and I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the remnants. And it was actually this white one because there was this uh, interesting flower center. And I thought, oh, that might look a bit interesting on the side of my pumpkin. So that's actually where I got the center of um, that one from. 
and then the stalk. And I'm just rough cutting at this point. I've just got a sc scrap of back. I think for the stalk was the only one I didn't actually use a piece of fabric because it was such a small piece. I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not cutting into one of my nice two and a half inch squares just for a tiny little piece of black. So I just raided my scraps. I'm just rough cutting around the edge. You don't have to rough cut. You could, of course, just cut that slightly smaller than two and a quarter and stick it straight onto your um, two and a half inch square. Probably about two and a quarter inch square uh, would do it. And then we're just going to grab a couple of our... So that's a little scrap of black. So that can go on there. And then we'll grab a couple of oranges. Should we do... We'll keep the ghosty one. Now I'm just, how am I seeing this? I think that one in the background and that one in the foreground. And I can sort of pick, there's a bit more orange there, so I'm going to sort of pick that to go there. It's a little bit wasteful. Um, let me actually just get, a, just get a pin and... Oh, that's a rather large pin. Hold that in place for a minute. And then the large one... And I'm just going to sort of choose where that's going to go. I might just take off a little bit more of the edge so none of the glue squeezes out. We don't want to be cleaning our iron. So we can take those to the iron and press them down. I'm just going to do the little bit first. Yeah. No, I hold them there for about the count of five. Have a look at your instructions for your particular uh, fusible because they all differ slightly. Some of them need water or steam. Some of them you just do it dry. No, I'm not quite sure with that one, which is why I just sort of did, did a generic. Just hold it for sort of about to the count of about five. Um, this was just a piece that was in the store. I don't actually know what brand this is. And then now I'm just cutting that out on the line. The trick for cutting run curves, move move your object in the paper, not your scissors, and don't do a full cut on your scissors. And then this one's a tiny little. And I'm even going to come down a bit further than where I had that dotted line. So now we've got those three pieces. Now I'm just going to check to see how they fitted on. Yes, like that. And then the stalk is going to go in. Oh, like so. Now that's already, that paper's already coming off, I think. Or is it the paper or is it the glue? Well, I think it might be the glue. That hadn't quite set for long enough. Let me just go and hit that with the iron. But I'm not going to hit that straight on the iron because I'm just going to take a bit of scrap fabric because. We've got a tiny shape there now, and I don't want the glue coming out, so I'm actually going to do it under my piece of fabric. That first one, I don't think the iron was quite hot enough. Yep, I think that's done it. Now to get the back off the paper, I've got a pin, and I'm just going to score 
paper and then you should be able to just get your fingernail in underneath. This has been a tricky one. There we are, there it goes. And the same with these. I find it's easier to do that than to try to get it from the edge because sometimes when you're sort of picking at the edge, the edge can start to sort of fray a bit. So let's take our pieces to the iron. Now I'm going to keep that pin because, and I'm going to grab a couple more actually. Uh, small ones if I can. Now let's take that all to the iron. Now what she says in the pattern is if you um, fold everything in half to find the centre. Now for this, you know, I just sort of eyeballed it really, but let's do like the instructions tell us. And then I'm going to decide what's the top and what's the bump bottom of my pumpkin. And I'm actually just sort of lining up where that pumpkin goes in with that. I think it goes that way. Like that. And then I'm going to just tuck my little stalk in underneath. But before I do that, I'm actually just going to stick a pin to hold that. That's the beauty of these wall mats. And then I'm just going to position my stalk just how I want it. If I want it sort of coming out on a slightly jaunty angle, I can. If I want it coming straight out, I can. Now, I'm just going to be mindful because we might have a bit of glue on that. So I'm just going to get that big pumpkin down first. And then I'm going to put a bit of scrap fabric or you can get a bit of paper from the fusible but we just need to protect our iron in case there's any bit of glue there. So I'm actually going to do it, that piece of fabric on top and hope I don't bond it all. <laughs> nope, we're good. And there's our little pumpkin. Now on this one, let me bring this one in. I just did a little blanket stitch with um, some embroidery floss all the way. I chose black for the stalk so you can barely see it. And then orange to go around the pumpkin. I went around the center and then I just came back and did a little running stitch to just to give the pumpkin a little bit more definition. As I said, I've got um, a tutorial I did on different hand stitches and the blanket stitch is in that as well. So we'll definitely put a link to that because both of those stitches I've used for those appliques will be in that. Um, so we'll do that. So that's all our bits made. Should we actually put this cushion front together? Okay, so in the pattern she says to pick out 20 of your two and a half inch squares to make the patchwork. Um, and like I say, I've done a little bit of stitching ahead of time because I didn't want this video to go on for too long. Um, I wanted to sort of focus on the applique, but I've just done a row of six. I think I said this earlier, two four patches, her applique centre, and then another row of six. Uh, and, and that's actually how I made them. Did two four patches, row of six, row of six. So now we're going to attach the two four patches to the side of our applique. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch down either side. Now I've got those on, I'm going to grab my top piece. Now we do have some um, points to match here and she does give you some pressing directions but I just sort of made my seams go whichever way they needed to go. But there are pressing di uh, directions in the, uh, in the pattern.
Now, if you've used a solid square in there, there'll be nothing to match in this point, but um, I think it's two and a half inch squares. So I have got another seam. bottom piece and I'm just sort of squeezing those seams together Now I've just pressed all of those seams towards the center, but it probably would lie flatter. You could very easily um, do those two last long seams and press them open. There's sort of about the same, well, there are the same amount of seams on, on both sides. So there isn't a sort of a natural preference if you like. So that's how that one is looking. Um, as I said, what I tend to do is sort of embellish it once the top's all together. Then she has you cut sort of eight and a half inch pieces which go onto the sides. And then um, she suggests eight and a half by three inches and then uh, 17 and a half by three inches for the outsides. Now these, you'll probably notice, they're not three inches. They're actually two and a half inch wide strips. And I'm using them because it's just what I had left over. So rather than cutting into um, other fabric, I thought I would just use these. Uh, this is uh, a grunge. I think this is eggshell, a grunge, and I had uh, a few bits left. Now, she's oversized the cushion. She's very generous with the um, oversizing of the cushion, and she also uses half-inch seams to put this together. So I'm, I'm doing two-and-a-half-inch strips, so if I use quarter-inch seams, our cushion should end up being the same size. So if you haven't got three-inch wides, you can definitely make, still make it work with two-and-a-half-inch wide strips. So that's what the cushion front is going to look like. I just need to sew on those border strips. I would then piece of, uh, sorry, put a piece of wadding in behind because I tend to like my cushions to, to look quite sort of puffy. And once the wadding has gone in behind, then I'll come back and do sort of my little bits of embellishment, any other sort of quilting I want to do, any hand stitching. So that, that's the point. I'll put my little spider's web in with my spider. I'll probably do some other decoration. I'll probably do some stitches along the bottom of the pumpkin. Um, to sort of ground it because at the moment it looks like it's floating in midair a little bit but at that stage once I've just got a piece of wadding behind I'll do all my decoration and then I'll put a lining piece of fabric um, once I've come to sort of assemble that I think we did that on the tulip cushion so if you if you go back and have a look at the tulip cushion uh, we talk a little bit about sort of how I decorated that one so I hope you enjoyed this. I had so much fun with both of these, the flower and the pumpkin ones. I'm going to let you all into a little bit of a secret. I've actually done two more of those and I've actually used a different flower shape. I've got, I've got a die that gives a different flower shape and it's just about the right size. So I thought, I'm just going to try this and see how that works. So I've actually got another two in part assembly at home with, with uh, leftover bits of two and a half inch squares that I had from a jelly roll. So they're just so fun to do. And like I say, you can actually per personalise them and just sort of turn them, make them for sort of any season. It's just a really nice way of using up two and a half inch squares. And we all know how much I love my two and a half inch squares. So thank you to uh, Bunny Hill Designs for producing that pattern and making it available to us and her beautiful fabrics. I hope you give it a try. Thank you for spending some time with us here again. If you've liked this, please do like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things that help support our channel. Uh, thank you for your time to get today. And I hope you'll join us again here next time in the sewing studio.